It's the beginning of a new season for the hit television show, Friends. In a little more than two weeks, the first episode will be filmed in front of a live audience. Over the next nine months, 23 more will come together in rapid fashion. A TV show is like a freight train. Once it leaves the station, it gathers an unstoppable and relentless momentum. First on board for Friends are the writers. In the first episode, maybe the first line you're playing catch up, but... You know, the, but, but the I second one, when you, you know, I just got to get it off my chest. Not to me! But by then, you know, I think you're definitely it's there. Easy. This is the oh, yeah. Rachel's hotel room. Remember in the cliffhanger last season how they uh, Her and Ross got, got kind of drunk in here? Kind of. They were blasting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hello. 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 <laughs> The end of last season. The end of last season was sort of a double cliffhanger. This is it. Are you sure you want to do this? Monica and Chandler plan to get married. Just before they walk into the chapel and are able to go through with it, Ross and Rachel drunkenly stumble out of the chapel, having just gotten married. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my God. We, A, don't know what Monica and Chandler are going to do, and B, we have no idea what the hell Ross and Rachel were thinking and how, what they're going to do to get out of it, or if they even want to get out of it. Adam Chase is an executive producer and one of the head writers on Friends. He's written the first two drafts of the premiere episode, and now the way it works is the script gets thrown to the table, where the entire writing staff gives input and makes suggestions. It's not about that. What it's about, about is he, um, um, he really just does not want another divorce. And I really think that confuses things. You can fix it by, in that scene that he says, we'll get an annulment. And he goes, oh, and she's blah, 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 blah. And he says, well, it, because it's still a failed marriage. And she goes, but it's like it never, ever happened. And she says, and he goes, oh, okay. He kind of reluctantly gets on board. Then you'll at least understand it when he does it. It's not just off. This episode, the first episode of the season, we've got the wedding chapel, Rachel's hotel room, the coffee shop at Caesars with the buffet line. We have an airplane. We have Monica and Rachel's apartment. John Schaffner, the art director, runs down the list of sets in the season premiere for supervising producer Todd Stevens. But it's all guesswork because the script is still a work in progress. This is stage nine, gentlemen. The season ending cliffhanger poses a unique challenge for the grips and construction crew. The final episode featured several scenes shot on a large Caesars Palace set. This required tearing of one of Friends' permanent sets, the coffee house. When it, when it came out, it was like we wanted it out now, so it came out in kind of a haphazard way, and now um, it all has to be piecemealed back together. It'll be all right when we find all the parts. They're all here, scattered about, but they are here. And if they're not, we make new. I built it uh, for the pilot originally, and that was six years ago. It hasn't been touched since then except just keeps getting more screws and the nails in it. And this time it came out like it, it shouldn't have. Once it's back up, they'll never know it was gone. I'm the grip boss. The gentlemen that are helping me put this set back together are grips. And with help of the prop makers and carpenters, we find all the pieces. We'll get this thing put back together. We don't have the script yet, so we don't even know what it's actually all in and out. And as they sit up there and write it, it becomes... It changes. It becomes a situation where they're figuring out, you know what, this isn't working right, let's change this. And we are already proceeding on doing the coffee shop and the airplane, and, and then all of a sudden it changes, and you know, you just have to always be prepared for the change, because... Grin and bear it and go for the next one. That's... It's all about making a funny script. Yeah. I didn't do it. I think that's less funny. Oh. I think it's funnier. <laughs> Not the way you it's did opposite. it. It's opposite there. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's funnier when it's got a kind of, when it's filled up. So, I'm sorry. No, the acting, I love, it was vivid. It was like, wow, where'd Sean go? But, uh... <laughs> As Friends heads into another season, there's a lot riding on just how funny they can make it. <laughs> It's always one of the top ten rated shows on television, 
and NBC still relies upon Friends to kick off its crucial Thursday night block of must-see TV programming. Must-see TV Thursday in two weeks. As far as our Thursday night goes, it, launched, it sets off our Thursday night, and without it, we would have a very difficult time keeping the numbers as high as they are. It becomes an identity. You know, when people drive by the Warner Brothers lot and they see the Friends cast photo on that wall, you know, for the studio, it is, we are the studio that produces Friends. You know, the financial rewards are should be obvious. Friends averages over 24 million viewers every week. This makes it one of the crown jewels for Warner Brothers Studios. They produce the show and sell it to NBC. I actually think that's all you need. I think Phoebe, really? can, after Phoebe's joke, she can walk out and they can all look out after her. At either end of the writer's table sit Marta Kaufman yeah. and David Crane. They created Friends, and together with their partner, Kevin Bright, Big first show, big first show. They oversee one of television's most successful production companies. Besides Friends, Bright Kaufman Crane has two, two other shows in primetime. Bright Kaufman Crane. Sweetie. Jesse and Veronica's Clock. Beat your new boss. Hello. <laughs> there you go. We met in college, and so we, we've been writing for over 20 years together. And we did musicals in New York. We wrote musicals. In our late 20s, we went, wow, we're not making any money. And so... I had a baby at this point. We just started coming up with ideas for shows and trying to sell them. And one of the first ones we sold was Dream On. Dream On's success on cable opened the door to the networks. NBC put friends on the air in 1994, and Bright Kaufman Crane was off and running. Kai Blomberg, Quent Schierenberg, and Greg Bruza make up the set dressing department for Friends. Their first order of business is to dress one of the three main sets on Friends, Monica and Rachel's apartment. This means putting back every piece of furniture, decorative art, books, and the countless other items that turn a soundstage into a TV home. This is Marjorie, our prop master. Well, we like to call her a prop diva. We're gonna stay back. Coming into the prop room, see what it looks like after last season's uh, clothes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Props are what I do. Props are anything an actor touches. Anything that they need to touch and handle is right. something that props handles. You know, on other kinds of shows, it would be guns, it would be, you know. A clipboard, a briefcase, a cup of, in this case, a cup of coffee, the food lot. they're eating, the yeah. magazine they're reading. Anything the actor touches, she has to find and make it just perfect for that character and for the scene. Hey. Hello. Oh. Oh, Monica. It's so beautiful. I know. <laughs> One episode, Monica had a dollhouse given to her by her great aunt. It was a Victorian beautiful dollhouse, and, she, and Phoebe wanted to play with it, but Phoebe wanted to bring all sorts of absurd things into it, and Monica refused. So check it out. Ha <laughs> ha. What's this? That's a dog. Every hug. Every house should have a dog. Not one that can pee on the roof. <laughs> so Phoebe decided to make her own dollhouse out of shoeboxes. Ah, look, look, look. <gasps> so that was a real fun one. Of course, we had to make six. So not only did we make In like three dollhouse. days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a short day. We had the licorice room. You can eat all the furniture. <laughs> Does anyone want to join me in the aroma room? Oh, I would. But we had to make six because, of course, they had to burn. <laughs> oh, fire! That's a fire! Fire! <laughs> <laughs> it was like the piece de resistance of this department at one time. <laughs> All the pieces of the Friends' signature set, Central Perk, have been found, and work continues on reassembling the world's most fa famous make-believe coffee house. Good job, Eddie, Tommy, Ruben, Danny, Larry, Johnny. 
Bajan Naj Shop, Adult Model Building 101. Oh Let's go to lunch! Once Central Perk is back up, Greg, Kai, and Quint would begin to choreograph the redressing of the set. <laughs> make it straight through. I can see it. To redress these sets, we have all these continuity photos to help us along the road. We have like in the Plexi counter, where we get all this coffee and tea product and you name it, that we change every third, fourth episode, you know, to make it realistic because you can't have a stagnant coffee shop where everything stays the same. We only have one of those. It goes over to there. On the right side? Yes. See if you can fit it in too. You might be cheated. The shelf. Smelly cats. <laughs> Phoebe's chair. She always sits there. That's, That's her place, yeah. Joey, this is his home right here. A little bit too frothy for me. But we still have TMS here. What the hell's TMS? Too much St. Henry. A new draft of episode one has come down from the writer's room. Some scenes have been written out and replaced with new ones. This triggers a hasty conference held on a prop, a Caesar's Palace blackjack table. So we can leave the wedding chapel as is. I just need to know what to like. Can we work on this to light now? It's not going to move. Don't right? ask They me. can, but it's a gamble. Right here. Can I up a moment? Thank you. Watch your eyes. Double on. Raise it up. have double on the bottom? Okay. Yes, sir. I'm the gaffer. And I work uh, in concert with the director of photography to get to look at the show. As you can see in the apartment here, we have a, a week's rig to get everything prepped and ready for the actors and everyone to come in. I'm raising the, the right flags there. out of the lights so that we can start fresh and uh, see where all our lights are going. And then once we get our lights in place, then we'll bring back our flags and beautify the set. Flags are these black things here that cut other lights out of other lights, so we don't have three lights pointing in one direction. And we don't want any light leaking into the camera lenses because you have what we call flares, and that's good if it's like an action movie and you want the flares, but on this TV show stuff, we don't like them, so we keep the light out of the camera lens. Each part of the set is uniformly lit. Once the cameras are rolling, there's no time to stop and light for each and every shot. Josh, you're going to go with the a teaser yeah. on this pub? Yeah. I was thinking about bottoming it, too. So a teaser is just a larger flag that's like maybe eight feet long. You're probably going to use a six foot or eight foot one. I'm putting on my safety belt. So this thing will catch me. Tim is heading for the ozone, a gaffer's term for the upper reaches of a soundstage. So we're trying to avoid climbing out on the ozone as much as possible. It's four stories above the stage floor a place where you leave the fantasy world of television behind. You have to be really concerned of all this when you're working up high, because it's no joke up here. You really got to take it seriously. This thing uh, works similar to a seat belt. Um, it'll let me go as far as it'll let me while I pull slowly, but if I give a good tug, it locks up. It's important to take your time and do a good job. Everything that we do up here can hurt somebody down there. If one thing that we tie off wrong falls and lands on somebody, then uh, that's bad. You know? What if we eliminated Joey and Chandler's? If you eliminate Joey and Chandler's, it really wouldn't matter because what I'm going to okay. do is pull out the two walls and then reset the back wall and just get it dressed so you can do both. There's still so much of the show to go after this. How many scenes are in here? One? One elevator walk to the table. So and then we have, how many scenes do we have in here? More than one. One giant scene. The difficulty is that when they originally, you know, left, walked out of last season, everyone went on their vacation thinking, oh, we'll come back and we have to finish up all this stuff at Caesar's Palace. We won't be back in New York. We'll leave a lot of the sets up. So we left everything up. As they, you know, they started sitting around the table and thinking about it, they thought, well, we only have a little bit home. of story. Get us back home. <laughs> there. There just isn't enough material. They're done. But after tonight, we basically run out of stuff. To, the crew okay. runs out of stuff. To do. You don't need to While the writers work the script and the art department tries to stay one step ahead, the boys from set dressing put a few more props in place and unwind with their favorite pastime. It's the first production meeting of the season. 
So here we go. We have Kevin directing this week. Yeah. Okay. Some people needed a little more vacation. All right. <laughs> As an executive producer of Friends, the last thing Ken Wright seems to need is more responsibility. But he'll personally direct at least 10 episodes this coming season. The enjoyment I get out of, you know, spending a week on that stage with that cast is uh, really what, what makes it worth with everything else I've got going on. Okay, we're in the wedding chapel. It's continuous from the last episode. The production meeting is the first time all the department heads gather to prepare for episode one. We're on six. With show night only four days away, they flip through the pages of the latest script, discussing everything from wardrobe to props to makeup. We're on 10. Ross and Rachel come over to the table. They no longer have ink on their faces. They no longer have ink on their faces, except there's a, should, should you see a whole letter? Because he says you have writing on your head, so should there be an S that's not covered We're from the Ross? The no. idea is they've washed it so, so much that it's faded and now the makeup, makeup does work. work. So that when he does do the makeup bit, it should cover it up. Okay. Oh, it depends on how I want, want to play it. If I want the production to meeting it, finished, it Kevin Bright takes a, Bright takes a quick tour of us to make sure everything is in place for the next day's rehearsal. On them. It should come from around this corner and just basically pull up right here. It just makes it feel really... Yeah. It's a fire thing. It's the first time you've ever worked in five years. <laughs> Hey, I've never seen you down here on the stage ever before. This is great. Matthew yeah. Perry. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, how are you? Great. Almost didn't recognize Who you. Who is this guy? <laughs> After his summer hiatus, cast member Matthew Perry gets reacquainted with his executive producer. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have. Stay on me, man. I'm the actor. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let him walk out. Page one. Let's make that cut. After Chandler's, oh my God, is everybody getting married? The writer's room is the usual hub of activity as they continue to tighten the script. And back on the stage, everything is running smoothly. What a mess. This is never going to work. Yeah, you guys remember how this goes back together, will you? Shoot anywhere. Rehearsal begins as Kevin and crew pick up the story from the previous season's cliffhanger. So everybody here saw the last episode last season, right? Uh, here we go. And... Ash. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Ross. Hello, Mr. Rachel. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Is everybody getting married? I don't know, but we were next. The first couple of days of rehearsal, it's really about the excitement of Here's a new script. <laughs> sort of has that atmosphere, like a bunch of kids in a playground huddling together and creating their own game. It's just, what if we do this? What if we do this? Where should we start? <laughs> we could go back. Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> well, um, last night we let the, the dice decide. Um, uh, maybe we should let up, leave it up to fate again. Well, um, uh, I love you. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me say that again. Okay. Well, um, last night we let the, the, the dice decide, and maybe, maybe we should leave it up to fate again. I love you. <laughs> the writers watch, scripts in hand, hanging on every line of dialogue. If a joke isn't funny, they're looking at a long night of rewriting. There are 12 of us because the way life works is you're not always on. Today, I might not be at my funniest for whatever reason. We know that there are like 150 people waiting for the new version of this. It has to be at the stage at 8.30 in the morning. Everybody thinks they can do it. Um, and I'm sure there are many people who can. Um, I think, A, it's not as easy as it looks. Otherwise, we wouldn't be there till 5, 6, and 7 in the morning with 14 incredibly smart people. It's not hard to be funny. It's hard to be funny in a way that will tr translate to the show and that you can air on television. You don't have time to worry about not being funny. You just have to be. Everything's great. So everything stays the same. Now you go on back, and then it's gone. Uh, you're closing the venture for three days. It's driving me crazy. And I'm going to sit down here and try to load the volume of my voice. <laughs> television is a writer's medium. They get paid very handsomely to be smart and funny. The hours are long and the schedule insane, which explains why Marta Kaufman and David Crane keep their staff filled with quick-witted 20-somethings. Once you hit 40, you can't do it anymore. Who's got this energy to, to go on three hours of sleep? You just can't do it. And also, I think um, the networks and the studios, they want the new, fresh ideas. They're looking yeah. for the young people coming in out of college. Some shows are out early. I mean, it just depends on the, 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 the nature of the beast. 
But if it's, it's a show like Friends, where you're here until four and five, five and six, once you're pretty deep into the season and it's gotten harder, yeah, that's tougher. Is that writing on your forehead? Oh, thanks. So you got married and became a woman all in one night? <laughs> the compact thing gets in the way now. Especially now. Yes. Yes. And don't I mean, something else yes. so much more interesting. And suddenly we, we take a step last, out. We talked about that last night. But we can't just abandon the fact that they have magic marker on face. A content annuity problem is mucked. The first episode picks up from last year, with Lawson and Rachel waking up in a Las Vegas hotel bed with writing on their faces. Do you, do you, have, a, do you have any clothes on? Yes. Really? No. The debate is over whether or not the writing should still be visible when they come down for breakfast. The question is, do they not have writing on their face? If they woke up in the morning. No, but we've already said it's indelible. I know, indelible, indelible. But then how did they cover it up? Because it's even stuff when you write something on yourself, the next day it's less. That's what I was saying. If in this scene it's there, but it's it's fainter. And then the next time we see them, it's a day later in the coffee house, and it's gone by then. I would have it be very faint in the morning, and you don't see it here. This is so amazing. <laughs> I really thought I would have to you know, talk you into this more. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared, because I don't know. Think it's here. <laughs> Rehearsal is an important time for script supervisor Jolie Barnett. Uh, we go through all the dialogue and just see what we need to do to change stuff. We were long today, I timed the show, and so they'll probably go in and trim. Since yesterday, the script grew a lot. It was like, we were like nine minutes long today. It's midnight, and after a long rewrite session, head writers Adam Chase and Greg Malins take a few more minutes to proofread yet another pass on the script. Tonight's rewrite was less about solving story problems than it was about finding like seven, like seven pages to cut, which is really hard in a script that works. It would be the first day of, of camera block for the 1999-2000 season. It's the first day cameras on the set. Hey, 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 let's go, man. Sitcoms are shot using multiple cameras on every scene. Friends uses four, and sometimes five, to film all the action. Let them come over to you. Camera blocking is the process of, at any given part of the scene, where are the cameras and what are they photographing? They're gonna be standing here, holding hands, the elevator door is going to open up, and you want to see between them the priest that's going to be standing here. In order to keep the camera dollies from crashing into each other, the camera assistant places numbered tape marks on the stage floor, which tell them where they need to be in every scene. Stand-ins are used to mark where the actors will be. I think it's funnier from here. Me too. I, I like that it just, just happens. Yeah, that it's but I also think they need to let go hands. And you don't have to they cut to do this. Uh, you can see the priest when they look at each other. Okay. I think that's part, okay. of, that's part of the... Uh... I got you. And that's it. So we'll clean it up tomorrow. I think we're in okay shape. Show day is finally here. Four hours before filming begins, 500 fans line up for 300 seats to watch the premiere episode of Friends come together. Oh, okay. All the way from yeah. Kentucky to leave it. My favorite character is Chandler. <laughs> I just want to go see Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Christine for Miriam, oh please send me eight more ticket holders with the sixth production right away. Right. Here we go. We're going in. Come on. You guys play the most important part, the live studio audience. Where are we going to let you up the Billy Horror all over the world? The night filming on this show is not just a, a filming. It's almost like club friends. It's really hard to describe. There is a, certainly a pinch of Beatlemania in it. The audience raises to their feet. They've been waiting for an hour, and there is definitely excitement and energy, at, like a concert. If everything goes smoothly, it will take about five hours to film the 22 minutes of actual showtime. 
The cameras are rolled into position, and the first scene gets underway. Scene Apple, take one. Four cameras. Marker. Each scene is shot a number of times, with a surprising amount of rewriting going on between takes. I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I can't either. I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I know. I didn't even know they were dating again. I don't think there's much dating as they are drunk. I don't think they're dating as much dating as they are unbelievably drunk or very, very drunk. Something fun and emphatic there. I don't think they're as much dating as they are completely filled with alcohol. The first take of the wedding chapel scene fell a little flat on David Crane's ears. While the cameras reset, they quickly try and come up with something funnier. Finally, they go to Matthew Perry. You know what? Why don't we ask him and that because it's so like Matthew. Okay. I think there's as much dating as they are acting on a scene from Barfly. All right. Did they ever so much dating as they are completely filled with alcohol? There's as much dating as they are two bottles of vodka walking around in human form. <laughs> yes. Seven minutes yeah. later, they're ready for take two. I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I know. I didn't even know they were dating again. Well, I don't think there's much dating as they are two bottles of vodka walking around in human form. <laughs> <laughs> the changing as we go is a really good testament to just how smart the executive producers are. And I've done a lot of shows in the past where I had kind of a tyrannical, don't touch the words, and it's just not the way to do a show. And if a joke doesn't work, you just see this whole group of smart people just get in this huddle and then they come out and they tell you a joke. The audience is going to tell you what's working and what's not working. Things that crack us up, they just sometimes don't get. Sometimes they get the setup, and you don't even need the joke. I'm going to jump back in, and they roll the dice, then they go back into the two. After they roll the dice, take a beat, and then go back into the two. The key in half-hour comedy, while well, there are a lot of things the director wants to bring to it, there's a very short window of time to get everything done, and so, yes, speed is uh, a necessity. Speed and a very good pair of shoes. Action! <laughs> Let's get married, I guess. Um, on your Let's Just Get Married, I guess, can it be even more forced enthusiasm? Oh, you don't think it's funny to play that kind of bum? Switch? Let's, Let's Just Get Married, I guess. Get married? Married. It didn't feel funny. Okay. I think the well, Let's Get Married, I guess. <laughs> The call to move on is the battle cry to prepare for the next scene. As the cameras make their way across the stage, the writers continue to pitch new jokes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else on ten? One little pitch on nine. Yes. Uh, it's a buffet. It's in trouble. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It. It's, it's, a it's, a it's in trouble. Oh, it's in trouble. Like, I'm going to go eat it all. How about, here's where I win all my money. <laughs> I like that. Great. After it, it's a buffet, he always says, here's where I win all my money back. And then there's a lot of changes coming. Good shit. You guys ready? Good Where is the waitress? I'm starving. <laughs> it's a buffet, man. <laughs> here's where I win all my money back. <laughs> okay, now we're going to reset. That's why. The completion of this scene triggers a frenetic bout of activity. The set dressers and grips tear out the Caesar's Palace buffet to make room for the next scene. Oh, you gotta get more excited. You gotta... A set change can take as long as 20 minutes. But with warm-up comedian Jim Entley to entertain them, the audience has no time to be, be bored. There's no question about it. There is nothing like a friend's audience. They are just complete maniacs when it comes to friends. A sitcom is as close to live theater as television gets. The actors play to the audience, and their feedback is crucial. Oh, yeah. We play off the audience all the time. Yeah. Very important. It's kind of like a test to see if the material works, if the jokes work, if the story tracks, if the audience is with, you know, if we've given them enough expedition along with jokes. We've done like 120 of these things, but our energy just elevates every time there's an audience. I still get nervous before shows, and. I think it's it's just generally, you know, it's like putting on a one-act play, play every week. 
Marker. This is insane. Well, that's the big deal. You know, it's not like a real marriage. What? Oh, no, when you get married in Vegas, you're only married in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? If you get married in Vegas, you're married everywhere. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> God. Is it clear at the end that she's talking about herself and the not oh about Ross and Rachel? The oh my god is bigger. The oh my god has to be bigger. Okay. And also, um, they laughed because they got it. I get it so hard on oh my god. But they didn't laugh at that. Well. Wait, what if the what if after oh my god laugh laugh laugh? I have to make some calls. We're just not very bright, and smart people will get it. Marta and David run a very democratic show. There's a question as to whether or not the implication of a joke from Phoebe are understood. So what do they do? They put it to a vote. Ask him. You can ask him. Ask All right. Who what did not get? Who did not get the fact that we, that uh, the people was married in Vegas? From that joke. She that says, "Oh my God." That at some time in the past she was some married in the past. You guys got yes. They're all. Got they got it. Great. Got it. Beautiful. I'm not lying. Oh. Marker. Uh, Ross, the bottom line here: we cannot stay married. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. Oh, yeah, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What we have here is a difference opinion. <laughs> and when that happens in a marriage... Oh, that's into a marriage! <laughs> now, Mark, listen, if you do not get this annulment, I will. Writer people! Is there anything funnier than stop saying the word marriage? We've got a... Yeah. We're in a drunken mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, huh? Talking about the line instead of stop saying the word marriage, which actually isn't funny. Crazy drunk mistake. This is not marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. This is the world's worst hangover. Yeah, that, that's great. Here we go. And rolling. And when that happens in a marriage. Oh, Ross, come on! This is not a this is not a marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Mozart, it just comes to you. Uh, I'm not responsible to get... But, but actually, actually, somebody it's else... It's just like Mozart. But actually, somebody else had, had the area, so it usually... It was someone else's area, actually. Mm -hmm. it was, exactly. It's just molding it. Someone, so, some, someone, I don't remember who, had pitched something in the area of... Um, drunkenness. Drunkenness. And, it's, 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 it's just, and then out of that... It's just molding. Somebody comes just up someone else with the it. right way to spin it. But I'll, yeah, when you finally and you put it in and they love it and the audience goes crazy and you get applause on a joke. That's not a bad ad. It's a very good. One. <laughs> That's a wrap. After 52 takes of 14 scenes and seven rewrites. The more than five miles of exposed film is rushed to the lab, where it will be de developed overnight. The 122nd e episode of Friends is officially in the can. Yo, guys, got 23 more episodes to shoot. What are you waiting for? <laughs> the next key step in the making of Friends takes place in Steve Prime's editing room. This is a difference of opinion. <laughs> We run about 30,000 feet of film for all four cameras, which is about 12 hours of footage for one half-hour show. We then sync it up so that all four cameras will be played back on my machine simultaneously. And starting on Monday morning, I start cutting the show together. The hard part of editing is, is this where you have problems, and that's, those are the ones where you do the most work. And when that happens in a marriage... No, 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 no. There's, of course, many different ways I could bring her up. I could easily change it to this shot. Which I shied away from because she exited frame. Uh, the impactful way is to be close. Television is a close-up medium, so uh, I could go right from there, and then punch in for a close-up. So, so this is another option. This is not a marriage. No, girls, come on, this is, not, this is not a marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. Very fine way of cutting it. I opted to just play it all in close-up. Happens in a marriage. No, Ross, come on, this is, not, this is not a marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. <laughs> Sometimes the audience responds too big. If I went with the actual laugh, <laughs> so 
So that laugh is still going through her next line into his next reaction. And that's it's five, six seconds. And in TV land, that's an eternity. Sometimes we have to put in a laughter that is shorter. Sometimes we do it to get it over with quicker. After three days of editing, Kevin Bright and Marta Kaufman screened the first rough cut. I don't love that joke. I feel like it's cheap. This doesn't mean anything, does it? No. Okay. Is it funnier to go to that wider shot sooner? I thought it was funnier as a reveal, um, but I'll try it. <laughs> Do you have one where when she screams, when she sees Joey, she stays freaked? Look, see, she seems to calm down after she screams. She And then she calms. Or get out of it faster or something. Kevin now joins Steve to work on the changes. When he's not on the stage floor directing an episode, Kevin can always be found in the edit room, where he sees every show through this painstaking phase of post-production. Okay, let's try this. Cutting off of this shot in the same place you did, let's try him again. And then try coming back to this screen and then end over here with him turning around. Okay. Here is how the scene was finally edited. Ah! Oh. Morning! Ah! <laughs> After making the changes, the big challenge is getting the show down to exact length, 22 minutes. This show was three minutes and 40 seconds, though. Okay, so That's a lot. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Deep cut. Steve and I, in surgeon-like oh, manner, oh, cut out of the show. Oh, no. But it gets to a certain point that you're only left with the stuff that you really love, so how do you keep it all in? It's taken us, taken us a while. <laughs> After editing, the show gets passed on to a number of technical experts, where every frame of film and every second of audio is carefully examined and polished. Here, the husband and wife team of Mike and Casey Crabtree add sound effects in a process known as Foley. We're Foley artists, and Foley was uh, originated in the 1920s by a man named Jack Foley. Awesome guy. These are my shoes. Everybody has their favorite shoe collection. These are heels that make a very, 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 very sharp sound, and I use them for hooker heels. And I even have Spice Girl shoes. <laughs> They're hard to walk in. <laughs> I'm going to do a scene on Friends now with Phoebe. She's running. She's going to go from a cement surface to a carpet surface. You mirror what's on that screen. You get character. You are that person. Okay, pretty good sync. I felt comfortable with that. Hurry, 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 hurry. Okay. The essential tools of the Foley artist? Props. Every conceivable object to make sounds. Okay, Tom, take two. If we don't like it, we'll do it again and again and again until we like it. It's our final call. Okay, Tom, we're going to do it one more time. You have to have real good sync. <laughs> Work for me. Let's listen yeah. to the sound. Foley's really messy. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Wendy, Jane, Marilyn. Marilyn. Hi, honey. Music editor Marilyn Davis has come to meet with associate producer Jamie O'Connor and co-producer Wendy Noller. Oh. I do music editor for television shows, specific niche sitcoms. They screen the show and determine where music is necessary. I think just normal transition is fine. I don't think we have to do anything. Trail over. Yeah, trail over. And You're not gonna put Each like show is not scored. A bulk of music is given to the editors by the composer every year. About four or five new batches a year. Because that might work. And those are then in the parlance of the industry tracked. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just the main title, and Okey I think dokey. we're done. We're done. Not Did too bad. Fabulous. There's not too much stuff in Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> the next day, in a storefront studio, a few miles from the Warner Brothers lot, Erilyn goes over several versions of composer Michael Scott's music for the opening of scene one. What? That's a great cute. Can you shorten it? Yeah. A little to get the piano. I'd like Move the, piano the piano to happen up. while right. while she's still asleep. I can, can take out half that second phrase. Whatever. Here we make sure that the music fits both mood, the situation, and fits physically which is really what music editing is. I mean, editing is cutting to make fit. It is really amazing how long it takes us to do a show with 20 cues, three seconds each. Oh, oh that's great. That's already cut down. All right, well, that does that come up. Yes. And sitcoms just, I mean, it's like boom, 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 boom every week. And everybody is doing their job, and it all comes together at the mix. At the mix, all the different sound elements, dialogue, laughs, effects, foley, foley, and music combined by engineers Charlie McDaniel and Kathy Oldham. Um. <laughs> Their job is to set the proper level for each track and filter out unwanted noise and hiss. <laughs> okay, there's one I missed. It's a frequency that comes in on this edit, so it could have been a different shot. Put some filters in here to try and knock some of this stuff out. Kathy and I usually play guess that frequency, and she's usually right. Uh, which elevator ding do you want to use? We have two here. Supposed to get married, there would be a clear one. cut sign. That one? Okay. Get married, there would be a clear cut sign. Um, I actually think two is better. I think one sounds like a hospital. We were supposed to get married, there would be a clear cut sign. We had four hours or five hours to complete a half hour sitcom. So we're kind of known as the triage of mixing in, in the half hour sitcoms. Full 45 second dance. We're doing 35 now, you guys, from now really on. Bummed. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. It's hilarious. We the love the characters. And They're all just perfect. perfect. And there's always like three different little um, dialogues going on at the same time, and so it keeps you interested. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. <laughs> it's got a great wit when you have so many shows on TV now that are just full of junk and, and, and are just stupid and come along and go. Friends has stayed over the past five years, and it's, it's been a great show. I'll be there for you. It reminds us oh, of the way okay. we act. Because <laughs> you're there for me, too. Do, 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 do. I laugh every day. My, my life is going to be longer because of friends. I feel insanely lucky. It's a staff that loves all these characters. When I was homesick from school, I watched The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. Kids or my grandkids are homesick from school, they're going to watch Friends. That is the coolest thing in the world to me. It is one of the most fun jobs I think you can get paid for. It's a rare situation where you go to work on a daily basis and actually look forward to seeing each and every person that works on your show. To get something that is so creatively satisfying 
and such a wonderful relationship with a group of actors. Good show, Matt. All of it came together, and the, the stars were all aligned, and everything worked out right, and I don't think it gets better than this experience has been.